Festival this year, although it's a little bit uh, trimmed down from usual. Uh, we will not have the giant group photo because we're still being a little leery about COVID, and we are not going to have games because we're still trying to get staffed back up. We have been able to scare up enough staff to run Dance Till Dawn, so that is also back on Woo! Saturday night into Sunday morning. The fashion show is back this year. It'll be at 5 p.m. on Friday. The dance comp, we'll tell you about that too. That's going to be on Sunday this year. We had a bit of a scheduling mix-up, and we have to make we had to move it to Sunday. Uh, supposedly, I think the hotel set this up. We're supposed to have. The feed from this stage will be on channel 46 in your hotel rooms. That's also noted on your badges. Uh, I checked it earlier today and it was still showing hotel feeds, so I don't know if it's been if it's working yet or not. Yeah, just another glitch. Exactly. <laughs> the pool party is happening again this year, like we've done in years past. The first, the first one is tonight. They're, they are Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. It skips Saturday. Thursday, Friday, and Sunday runs 8 p.m. to 12 p.m. Tonight is weird. It starts a half an hour late. So it starts at 8.30 instead of 8. Don't ask me why. I've never figured that out. <laughs> p.m. P.m. Or, yeah, sorry, 12 a.m. Yeah, sorry. It's not that long. 
wish it was that long. That'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Hot tubs are open. The lower pool might be closed. I think we've been working on that. Uh, I haven't heard back one way or the other, but just you'll figure it out when you get there. And there's still plenty of room for everybody especially with the hot tubs and the pool and the upper pool and also all the cabanas are available for us to use during those pool parties for people to sit and chill and hang out and visit. As, as we did last year, we're doing dealer den tickets for Friday so that we don't have an enormous line in the hall that leads all the way to like the next casino. <laughs> And if you have not gotten your ticket yet, I think we have a graphic coming up to put a QR code on the screen that you guys can visit. Um, that will be a quick way to get yourself a DEN ticket. You, if you've already gotten one, you already have one. Many of you already have. But we'll put that up there for your convenience so that you can, you can grab one now if you haven't yet. Their uh, Furry Logic is running an escape room for us all weekend. They are already open now. I think they've already done three or four games starting today. And uh, let's see. We have panels upstairs as usual, which are uh, up on the third floor. Uh, schedule updates for the panels can be found on Twitter. The hashtag is errata, and there is another QR code on the back of your badge that runs that Twitter search, if you ever want to see if there's been any schedule changes. Uh, more, free, more free fun stuff for people to do. The driving range is open again this year from, uh, from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. That's yep. noted on, that time is noted on the back of your badge as well. So you can go there and hit the GSR's balls if you want to. <laughs> we also have free bowling, which starts tonight, which is right over yonder, uh, from midnight to 6 a.m., where you can go throw the GSR's balls. <laughs> and then we have free go-karts, as usual. Still, still no fursuit heads, no fursuit paws, but free go-karts, where you can run over the GSR's track. <laughs> We have a photo booth that is in the Grand Ballroom starting tomorrow. That's what we most of us know at the second stage. You can get prints from that photo booth and donations to charity are appreciated. And anything people donate at the photo booth, we will make sure goes entirely to our charities. Uh, downstairs for now, I think upstairs tomorrow maybe. We may move it, it depends on how much people are using it. We have a new activity, Cursed Candy. If anybody brought some porters with them and has tried out the Cursed Candy, you are braver than I am. Like an entire Halloween bag in one. And, and I also want to thank Av Wolf from uh, the AV crew for the idea. They've had a cursed candy for a couple years now, and I wanted to turn it into a charity thing. And when you get bored of all of that, you can start volunteering if you want, because we won't complain. Especially the rest of our volunteers won't complain, because it takes a load off their shoulders. And you can do that downstairs at the desk on the entrance into the main con space downstairs. As in prior years, the food is half price in con space. There is a change this year. Those, that food is being advertised at the half price from the start. There's no more confusing, like, something is ten, listed as $10, but then it rings up as 5 It's just listed as $5 and rings up as 5 It's really 10 but we're paying the other half for you so that you can get a reasonable deal and that uh, you can help us get to our catering goals. Thank you for buying food in the con space because it really very much does help us. The con space is also a really good place to eat because inside con space you can be pretty sure basically everyone is vaccinated, unlike out in the rest of the building. So it's a little, it's a little safer. Uh, I now have some uh, stuff to talk about for charity. Uh, the first bit of really big news is the BLFC itself, as of just a few weeks ago, has been converted to a 501c3 charity. We are now a, a fully fledged charity that people can <laughs> actually, actually really properly write off. And I want to extend a huge thanks to our treasurer, Verdalga, for navigating that huge pile of paperwork. Uh, there will be 
there are a few changes that we had to do this year for legal reasons, and then you will you can expect to see more changes next year uh, as a result of us having a proper C3 status and being able to get a bunch of stuff for free. Uh, we have we have three charities this year. We have uh, two uh, two minor charities and our main charity. Our main charity, as usual, is Safe Haven that we've had for years. I'm happy to see them come back and welcome them back. We've also brought back the Generator, which is a local makerspace that has helped us a bunch with our decorations and I believe will continue to help us. Um, they really want to see, if you're local to the area, they would love to see more people and makers come into their makerspace and build stuff, especially furries. And we've also brought back uh, what's uh, lovingly known as the Communist Party, which is a Bay Area charity that is raising money for Insight, which is an LGBT organization in Ukraine. Uh, they are, they have been, they've been pouring their efforts lately into helping support Ukraine in their, in their uh, fight. Uh, okay, so the next thing to know is, as usual, cash donations are great, card donations are great, Poker chips are valid donations because we can take those over to the uh, to the cashier cage, and also slot vouchers are valid donations, especially the really tiny ones that are only like five cents or ten cents or something like that. Like, like I have here in my pocket, those are a great thing to hand over to either our con ops or Alkali, if you can find him. Uh, generally, just follow all the yelling and screaming. You should be able to find him from quite a ways away. And, um, yeah. Oh, I missed a cue. Oh, well. <laughs> there are art gallery donations that... Uh, we, sorry, I'll call you screwed me up. <laughs> Our art gallery always accepts donations of charity items. Small ticket items will be auctioned off directly within the art gallery. Big ticket items will be moved to, they'll be display only in the art gallery, and they will be auctioned off at, on Sunday at 4 p.m. in second stage right behind us. And, uh, yeah, I need to call Alkali up to the stage because I have a present for you. Oh, where, where are you going? Yeah, I'm going to come the other direction. Yeah, I walked all the way around. Oh, okay. <laughs> Snuck up on me. Yeah, you did. Yeah, how many vouchers you brought? You psyched! <laughs> Just one. <laughs> We're still working on that with the hotel. They're a little leery about letting people film things. 
How organized all of, are all of you that you actually got to 69 cents for a moment there? <laughs> I'm a little concerned and worried for my health. gets us started, I guess. So as you get those small slot vouchers throughout the weekend, or you can go, you know, like gamble one dollar at a time and then lose like 20 cents and then cash that out and just keep doing that with every dollar bill you have. Uh, they obviously don't need instructions on this. We've already raised an amount of money equal to drugs. You have more announcements, and I'm having an aneurysm. Continue. I missed you all. It was so sad not being here last year. My wonderful mate, Zanny, looked over to me as I was sitting home from work, knowing all of you were having a good time, and goes, don't worry, I can represent you being there, and gave me a stack of post-it notes and told me to count them. You have a type, and it's depressed. <laughs> How many post-it notes were there? <laughs> if I remember correctly, 69. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Thank you for coming back, my friend. Uh -oh. Thank you for inviting me. I truly did miss you last year. So to make up for it, we're going to throw a bunch of charity panels this year. Are you guys with me? You want to see some charity panels? First one. All right, so here's what I'm supposed to read. Please, oh, you're highlighting it. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Oh, that's what you're supposed to be drinking. Please remember that it is dry here, and we are at altitude. Altitude. Stay hydrated. Remember, always drink water. Keep a bottle of water on you at all times. I'm the wrong person for that warning, my friend. I think you're the right person for that warning because I remember you yeah, yeah. learned the lesson about altitude the first time you were here. I don't learn lessons. I have experiences and then ambulance calls. It's a different kind of thing. Uh, we will be doing the car show Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. over by the go-kart track. There will be a raffle for small prizes, of course. The proceeds going to charity. The Blackjack Tournament, Friday at 2 p.m. in Tabletop Gaming. We have a 300-piece custom poker chip set for the winner of the poker tournament, which we had Saturday, 8 p.m., also in Tabletop Gaming. Wait, what are we doing? Apparently, I'm in a Pepper Coyote concert Friday at 10 p.m. Yeah, that happened. That happened. That, that was a last minute ad, so it's not on the print. Oh, it's, a, it's fine, they added it last minute. They didn't have time to tell me. I was planning on, you know, enjoying the number we came up with at that time. All right, Charity Who's Line is Saturday at 5 p.m. If you don't know what Charity Who's Line is, if you've ever seen Who's Line is anyway, it's a time for all of us to get together and be goofballs on stage with improv. We'll be calling up audience participation. We'll have a few friends up there, and we're going to try to get this one up there. Uh-oh. Oh. oh, correction? 11 p.m. Correction, we are moving that to... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Pepper... Yeah, that's right. Pepper. Apologies. Pepper Coyote and Friends concert is Friday at 11 p.m., not 10 p.m. My apologies. And, of course, join us for the always ridiculous Sunday charity auction at 3 p.m., where myself and a few of my friends try to come up with weird things to say about 30 items that you will then give us money for. It sounds like a con job, at a con job, and it is. <laughs> I, th I think we got a decent amount of it there. Yeah. And I don't think I should talk about safety. No, you probably shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> just going to take it from here, aren't you? <laughs> ah. 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 We are 
in Nevada, so. Uh -huh. Because we have no jurisdiction in that space, you will encounter people who are not masked. There are still other people at this hotel that are not part of the convention. I would strongly encourage everybody, especially with what, we, what we've seen at a couple of recent conventions and seemingly significant outbreaks, it would be a good idea to stay masked up as much as you can. We've got 5,000 people here probably that have all come from all over the country and COVID is currently on the rise in the US. It would be a good idea to stay masked up as much as you're able, as much as you can tolerate. You must be masked up in con space. That is for everyone's safety. And I'm tired of it too, but we all need, still need to do it for now. For those same reasons, we are once again not allowing people to dry their heads or blow air through them in the fursuit lounges. You can still stand in front of the blowers to cool down. Just do not take your head off and stick it in front of the blower. Set that aside, please. I know it means you then have to put on a moist, sweaty head, and I am very, very sorry. I hate it too. As with last year, the lounge staff is going to be very strict about this, and if we see too many incidences of people breaking this rule, we will shut down the fursuit lounges. No. So please, please police each other, please. Don't let people break these rules. It's important for safety. In all of our con spaces, social distancing is encouraged, but there's a lot of instances where it isn't really practical. And if you're able to do so, please do so. And masks make up the difference. Same, same stuff from last year, wash your hands a lot. Hand sanitizer is not a substitute for washing your hands should actually wash your hands periodically. Hand sanitizer is good in between hand washings. And so far, just like last year, everybody seems to have been quite respectful, and I'm very happy to see that. I've even seen a lot of people electing to keep their masks on in the hallways where they don't technically have to. And thank you for doing that. It, it will make a difference. It will make less people go home sick. We know that's always been a problem with cons, even, even before COVID. As in previous years, Flair is our safety team. They have an office uh, in the room behind us that is hard right as soon as you walk in the door to that room. They have a big banner that says Flair, F-L-A-R-E. You can go see them if you are feeling harassed or unsafe, or if you're feeling threatened in any way, or if you have a minor injury, they can help treat that or help you treat yourself. Uh, you can also, if you can't find flair, if you are feeling 
If you're feeling harassed or unsafe or threatened, you can also make your way to ConOps or any staff member. We will make an effort to get you where you need to be so you can be comfortable and safe. The phone numbers on the back of your badge will get to our ConOps and to Flare. We were under the impression that you could send text messages to those numbers. We've just learned today that doesn't work. That's apparently was killed last year by Google Docs and we didn't check it. I'm so sorry. Or not Google Docs, uh, Google Voice. So those numbers are unfortunately phone call only. You will need to actually call that phone number to get to those departments. We're still gonna try to keep, do our best to keep an eye on the accounts that have those text messages, but they're not gonna come through immediately. So a phone, phone call is better if it's, if it's something that needs to be dealt with right then and there. Uh, new this year, they are supposed to be reconfiguring the elevators to prioritize the downstairs level where we have the lines. So likely, assuming this works as planned, Lining up on the bottom floor is going to get you an elevator faster, even if the lines look longer. More elevators are going down there than going to the casino level, and you are likely to get elevator capacity more quickly if you wait in the lines down there. If you, yeah, it's, that was a hard fight. We've been fighting that. We've been trying to get that for years. There's an escalator right there. Um, if you are in a wheelchair or you otherwise cannot take stairs to go between this level and the lower level, instead of wading through those lines, even though we will take you to the front of the line anyway, instead of wading through those lines, there is an extra elevator that is over by the movie theater and bowling center that goes only between these two floors and that's it. That is probably your best bet to get between these two floors when you can't use stairs. On the subject of stairs, they also agreed to open up the stairwell this year for some of the floors so that people can skip elevators entirely if they're willing to climb a few flights of stairs. Yeah! That was also a hard that was also a hard battle to fight. So the stairs are a little weird though. They only go to floors three through eight. You cannot use the stairs to get to two. You are stuck with elevators if you're on two, I'm afraid. The, the pathway for stairs is really weird. I walked it, 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 just don't even try to understand it. But from three through eight, you can use stairs to get to those rooms instead of fighting with elevators. You can pick up the third floor stairs just outside the panel rooms. And we have some signage up there to direct you to where those stairs are. Another tip for getting around con space without having to, from changing banks, without having to get to all the way down to the casino floor to wait in an elevator and go back up again. You can get from the top, this is a little confusing, so bear with me. You can get from the top bank to the middle bank of, of room, of uh, floors, by going to floor 17. That is the bottom of the top bank and the top of the middle bank. You can cross elevators there. To cross from the middle into the bottom, you have to go down to floor eight and take the stairs to floor seven, and then you have those elevators to go further. Those are, those are your best ways to get between those floors without having to go all the way down and back up again. And hopefully that'll take a little bit of traffic away from the main part of the hotel. There is, we didn't have time to make a map for that, I'm so sorry. <laughs> We'll try to get another uh, tweet or something like that out to uh, put that in at least verbiage for people to remember because yeah, you're not going to remember it after I just rattled it off. It's an the, escape yeah, it does sound like an escape room, right? Um, important note on signs and flyers. Please don't put those outside of con space. They will get thrown away by hotel staff. Please put those inside con space. We will not throw them away. Basic courtesy, please tip the staff and the people who are helping you this, this weekend, your housekeepers, your, your wait staff at, at restaurants, your bartenders, etc. Uh, Nevada does allow people to be paid less than minimum wage if they accept tips. So tips are a big part of their income. 
I don't like it either, but that's the way the state is. So tip generously so that people get good income and, and can help them make a living. Hopefully Fat Tuesdays will keep up with us this year. We'll see. Uh, another item of courtesy that's been a thing in the past, I'm gonna remind people again, please don't leave adult things out in your rooms to disturb the housekeepers. <laughs> they would really rather not see those things. Do not disturb as a thing. Same, same thing is true for social media posts. If you have social media posts with adult content, please don't tag the GSR, because that makes it pop up on their feed, and you're sticking it directly in some poor person's eyeballs, and they don't want to see it. Another quick note for people who use Telegram, which is probably a lot of us, if you go through and change your settings to turn off all the media downloading, it does make a big difference. That will help cut a lot of the traffic so that so that Telegram can work properly and to at least get text in and out and you can download pictures as you need. There is also our, the traditional 621 rule for conventions. Six hours of sleep. I know there are lots of other 621 rules. The real one is six hours of sleep, two proper meals, and one shower. At least that, please. <laughs> we have our, the, the standard costumes are not consent. You've all heard it before. If somebody is in a costume, that does not mean it is a license to just reach out and touch them or do other things like that. You need to ask first before trying to get a hug or trying to get a photo. It is very easy to ask for a hug. You do this. You don't even need to speak. And that is the universal sign, and everybody understands that. If you want to indicate that you are not comfortable with hugs, we have ribbons for that in the fursuit lounges, because primarily it's for fursuiters. We keep them in the fursuit lounges for fursuiters' convenience. And that is all for what I wanted to talk about for courtesy and safety, I think. Pretty sure that's it. Lastly, it's time to thank people. First and foremost, I want to thank all of our amazing, generous volunteers for volunteering their time for this con this year. We already have as many volunteers right now as we finished with last year, so I am very, very excited. We have lots of help, and we can still use lots more. I want to thank our registration team for just absolutely killing it today. I think they were getting through something on the order of 450 to 500 people an hour. I want to thank the AV team for putting up with my last minute graphics requests that you saw popping up there. I want to thank our theme team for taking a very nebulous idea of glitches and broken things and giving it life. And I want to thank them for putting up with thinking that the printer was broken when they were printing the posters, that I'm still waiting for the post office to get to my house. <laughs> Hopefully they'll be here tonight. And I want to thank the Grand Sierra Resort for hosting us in their... <laughs> and I want to thank all of you for coming and enjoying our con yet again. Have a great night, have a great con, and thank you all for coming back. Uh, also, happy birthday, Josie.